what we're going to do now is export this map as a battle map for use in our tabletop games. There are two ratios that are used for tabletop battle maps. The first one is 32 pixels for every 5 foot of the map. This is a good ratio to use if you've got tokens which are basically Windows icons. The other ratio is 50 pixels for every 5 foot. And that's a good size if you're using things such as the Digital Adventures token sets or the Fiery Dragon token sets. In this case, we're going to export our lovely little temple and its side room as a battle map in the ratio of 50 pixels per 5 foot. Before we can actually save the image, we need to see how big it is. In other words, how many pixels across the entire map is going to be. Because we've still got our grid turned on to every 10 foot, this is easy to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and we'll give it a bit of extra room, 13. Or 130 feet. Of course, 130 feet multiplied by 5 foot for every 5, sorry, uh, multiplied by 50 pixels for every 5 foot comes out to 13,000 pixels across. Fairly large, but not over the top. What we're now going to do is actually the export itself. You click on the File menu, Save As, and we're going to give it a name, Temple of Terror, something nice and fun like that. And most importantly, we're going to select it as a rectangular section JPEG. The rectangular section option means that we will actually be able to choose exactly what area we want to export as. We also need to set the options functions and make sure that the horizontal pixels match the calculation that we created before, which is 1,000, sorry, 13,000 pixels across. Set the vertical pixels to some ungodly high number. The reason for that is with the crop function turned on, the software will automatically figure out how many pixels deep our map will have to be. Leave the quality as 100% and press OK. And then save. With the grid snap still turned on, select the top left corner and then all the way down to the bottom corner, making sure that you're counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, da 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 da, all the way to 13. We must make sure that the width of the map matches the calculation and pixels that we had before. Click on the far side, and as you can see, the image is now being rendered. Now that we've exported that file, let's go and take a look at what it looks like on the disk. I'll just call up the directory, and there it is. And let's view it in its actual size for the, for the battle map. As you can see, lovely detail, all on the right size, with a beautiful grid line placed on it. If you're using a tabletop software that automatically puts its own grid lines in, you'll probably want to render this without the grid line settings. Let me just show you how to do that now. I'm just going to close that down, go back to our map. You can turn off a grid setting simply by selecting the sheets, going to your grid sheets and saying, uh -uh, I want you to be hidden. That means that that entire sheet and everything on it will be hidden from view. As you can see, that is now hidden. And of course, you would just then go and resave the image in that format, and your map would be saved without the grid lines.